Okay, the last module of Chapter 7 is Module 22, and we're going to talk about forgetting and why we forget information, so why memory fails. And the two questions we're going to answer in this module is why do we forget information? And the second question is what are the major memory impairments that we have? So let's start off talking about memory failures. So what you may be surprised to realize is that there are benefits to forgetting information. Memory failure is essential to remembering important information. Sometimes you have to forget unimportant information in order to remember the, un or the important information. Again, sorry about that. Sometimes you have to forget the unimportant information in order to remember the important information. A second reason on, or a second, I guess you could say reason on why benefits, what are the benefits to forgetting, is that forgetting helps keep unwanted information from interfering with retrieving information that is wanted. This is very similar to the one previously. It's essential to remembering an important information. So sometimes um, when we forget unwanted information, it actually allows room to remember and retrieve information that is actually wanted. If we remembered every single thing all the time that we ever tried to remember, that's a lot of information to try and retrieve the information we want. So sometimes forgetting information is actually helpful. Forgetting also permits us to form general impressions and recollections. So we may not remember every single little detail about something, but we can remember the general concept about a specific topic or idea or things like that. And in the final um, benefit to forgetting is that it forces our brain to relearn and remember better in the future. If we have a problem remembering certain information, we have to go back and we have to relearn that information and that's gonna help us remember other bits of information better in the future depending on what type of cue or process we use for remembering that information. This is figure one, and this figure is on page, the top of page 226, and it was a study done by Ebbinghaus. And this is a study that Ebbinghaus did on himself. This was a study that was published a long time ago. Um, I guess it was a study that was done and then someone else actually recorded this study. Um, but Ebbinghaus was living between 1885 and 1913. So in his classic study, Ebbinghaus found that the most rapid forgetting occurs in the first nine hours after exposure to new material. However, the rate of forgetting then slows down and declines very little after many days have passed. So if you're going to forget information, it's going to happen in those first nine hours. However, as time goes on, there's gonna be less forgetting that occurs. And you can see here on the x-axis is the elapsed time, the days that um, you're looking at, and on the y-axis is the percentage of remembering or the percentage of retention. So you can see you have almost immediate recall immediately. And then 20 minutes later, that drops way down to like 59%, 58% within 20 minutes. Within an hour, it can drop down to probably like 48%. Nine hours, you're below 40%. And then you can see that then after that, it slowly declines also. It, it won't be such a, a steep drop, but you don't ever get to, you know, pure forgetfulness um, at like 20% until 31 days out. So you're more likely to forget information. You're going to see that steepest drop within the first nine hours. 
Okay, let's talk about why we actually forget information. One reason we forget is that there was some failure in encoding the information. You may have thought that you encoded the information, but perhaps it wasn't fully encoded or perhaps it wasn't encoded correctly. And so that may be one reason why we forget. We may have not paid as much attention to what we were trying to remember in the first place. So it says when material has been encoded, the failures may be cases of decay. So over a period of time, it may be interference, you know, other things competing for that or cue dependent forgetting. Decay, as I just mentioned, is the loss of information over a period of time. You know, things decay as time progresses, and your memory can also decay as time progresses. If you're not using that information, then over time you're going to lose. Well, I don't want to say lose because it's still there, but you're going to be less likely to remember the information. Also, this assumes that memory traces, which are the physical changes when new material is learned, simply disintegrate over time. So decay assumes that memory traces simply disintegrate over time. Now, this next slide, oh, sorry, there is something at the bottom of this one. I didn't look close enough. Sorry, not next slide yet. But interference, <clears throat> is when information in memory disrupts the recall of other information. We're going to talk about interference in just a little bit on an upcoming slide, proactive and retroactive interference. But interference itself is when information in memory disrupts the recall of other information. When we talk about cue-dependent forgetting, it occurs when there are insufficient retrieval cues to rekindle the information in memory. Okay, now the next slide. This is figure two at the bottom of page 226. So you've probably seen a penny thousands of times in your life, right? One of these pennies is the real thing. Can you find which one is the real penny? And then why is this task harder than it seems at first? So you look at these pennies and you're trying to determine which penny is the correct penny. Which penny is the correct penny? Okay, now, Let's come back and look at proactive and retroactive interference, the before and the after of forgetting. So the difference between the two. Proactive interference is information that was learned earlier disrupts the recall of newer learned information. So you can only remember the older information and you can't remember the newer information. Retroactive is the opposite. Recalling newer material disrupts recalling older material. Okay, proactive is where earlier learned information disrupts remembering new information, and retroactive is the opposite. Material that was learned newer disrupts um, older learning of material. So proactive interference progresses in time, retroactive interference retrogresses in time, working backward, okay? So that's the difference between proactive and retroactive interference. So an example of this is figure three, and this is at the top of page 229 in your textbook. You can see with this, right? Proactive interference is you first study French and then you study Spanish and you try to take your Spanish test. 
This recalling of information for your Spanish test is interrupted by the previous learned information in French. Now, the opposite is the retroactive. You study French and then you study Spanish and now you have to take a French test. Studying Spanish disrupted your recalling of information in French. So it looks at, one looks at the information you learn first and it re disrupts the information you learn second. Retroactive is the opposite. The information you learn second disrupts the information that you tried to learn first. Okay, the last slide in this module and in this chapter looks at memory dysfunctions, and these are afflictions of forgetting. So these are various disorders that individuals can be diagnosed with that definitely have memory um, or a lapse of memory as one of the major symptoms. The first one is Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is a progressive brain dis disorder, meaning it's going to get worse over time, and it leads to a gradual and irreversible decline in cognitive abilities. Alzheimer's disease is the fourth leading cause of death among adults in the United States. So it is this progressive brain disorder. One of the first symptoms you will notice is memory loss. A second disorder to talk about with forgetting is amnesia. And this is memory loss without other mental difficulties. So you may have memory loss, but you don't have other mental difficulties that go along with it, the way that you would with Alzheimer's disease. And there are two different types of amnesia. There's retrograde and anterograde amnesia. Retrograde amnesia is memory is lost for occurrences prior to a certain event, but not for new events. So you may not have long-term memories, but you do have your short-term memory. So you were in a car accident on January 4th. You do not remember anything prior to January 4th. However, you can establish new memories after January 4th. That is retrograde amnesia. And terograde amnesia is a loss for events that follow an injury. So you have your memories prior to January 4th. However, you cannot establish any new memories. That is terograde amnesia. The last disorder is called Korsakoff's syndrome. And this is a disease that afflicts alcoholics, long-term long alcoholics, Korsakoff syndrome, a disease that afflicts long-term alcoholics. Some of the symptoms that you will see with Korsakoff syndrome, excuse me, is hallucinations and a tendency to repeat stories. And that makes sense, right? If you don't have your memory, then you may not remember telling someone about something that has occurred. So you may tend to repeat your stories a lot. Okay, that is chapter seven on memory.